and tell you a joke. Is this on? <laughs> oh, we are. Cool. <laughs> Welcome back to another edition of Pip Answering Your Questions. Today I'm flying solo. Yep, that's right, flight dispatcher flying solo, never a good idea. Morgan, who joined us last time, had to do the honeydew list, being a newly married uh, dispatcher. Congratulations to him. In the meantime, sitting behind me is Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is a preview of landing in San Diego's Lindbergh Airport, so at least you have something to pay attention to if you're not watching me. I'm still fairly new to the game. A lot of questions coming in, probably close to 40, so I'll do my best to rapid fire and answer as many of them as I can. If not, we'll save them for next time, so let's get right started. Here's I make my final approach into San Diego's Lindbergh Airport. So the first question comes from Vagabond P, and he says, just wanted to know the FAA, if the FAA oral and ADX is difficult to pass. Has anyone achieved over 90%? So the first to answer is yes. I have seen people get over 90% on the exam, so that's not impossible. I got a 79% on the written exam. The oral, for me, was more about a half day of answering questions from the FAA inspector to make sure I was prepared to get my dispatcher's license. So I hope that helps with that. Next question, question two. It says, I worked as a cabin senior for an international airline for 10 years. I now live in the US. What are the opportunities like here for a dispatcher? So right now, obviously, if you're watching in 2020 in November, uh, things are a little shaky right now with the airlines. I know a lot of good friends who have just been furloughed from their airlines, I still have a job with my regional airline. So what I would say is things are getting better. So now we either need a vaccine, people to wear masks uh, when they're on board, and the confidence to travel again. So to answer your question, there are still airlines who are traveling. In fact, I might recommend maybe a cargo airline that needs uh, jobs to be filled soon because of the demand in cargo, but eventually it'll come back and hopefully in the next year or two. Next question. Let's keep on going down the line. Uh, Mark95 says, thanks for the video. Pip Hope all is well. I wanted to ask if there are any other careers outside of dispatching you can get with a flight dispatcher certificate such as air traffic control. To air traffic control, no. Uh, you do need to have specialized training and school to go to uh, and become an air traffic controller. However, your dispatcher license will help you a lot of what we call a supplemental 121 carriers, which is a category of air service for the FAA, will allow us to be a, what's called a flight follower. Now, you can have the flight dispatching certificate, which is a bonus, but you don't have to. So for most part, you, there aren't a lot of careers per se that require the flight dispatching certificate. However, uh, having that certificate will be a definite bonus as you continue on. And making note, uh, you see those blue bars there as we're on our final approach into San Diego. I turned on the uh, auto help to help me still be able to land because I'm fairly new at piloting and it's been forever since I was doing flight simulators. So that's why you might see those blue bars as we're on descent. Also, this is uh, 1080p at 60 frames. I've got another video on my flight simulator setup, so make sure and click on that to see uh, what I built and how much it cost. Next question, moving on right down. Radhi Gujar says, do dispatchers only have to work on computers constantly uh, on every time or every time that they work? Yes, uh, 10 hours a day is where we sit in front of computers. Uh, monitoring weather, monitoring radars, monitoring our flights in route to make sure they are safely. Today, the answer is yes. Moving on, how do you like working with your peers? Dub says, how do you like working with your peers? Usually, you will see a wide range of dispatchers who are out there. 
from those who have just started to those who have 30 years of experience. So for me, I work with people who have both 30 years of experience and also who are brand new in the last year too, including myself. I have just over a little two years of experience and training. Next question is, I almost blow the approach here. Don't ask any questions, I'm still new at this. Let's go to how fun does the job get? JWE says, how fun does the job get? Well, I can tell you there's some days where you're super busy and you can't stop to even use the bathroom because of weather, because of maintenance, uh, and everything that comes with it. So that is a challenge. And then there are other days where it's super light, where it's VFR, visual flight rules, sunny skies everywhere in the US, and you're done probably halfway into your shift as far as planning flights, as far as uh, getting them out to the captain. So it just really depends. As a general rule, I love my job. I freaking love my job. I wouldn't be doing anything else. It took me 10 years to find this career. I don't want to do anything else for the rest of my life. So I hope that helps give you a better idea. Two more questions that we can answer. Fernando says, I love aviation. It's a dream to become a flight dispatcher one day in my future at my 40s. I have contact I found in Dallas and Sheffield in Miami. It's difficult to know what is the best school. So Fernando, I went to IFOD and that's a great school. I know Sheffield is an excellent school as well and uh, teaches definitely key things. Remember that a lot of these schools, they all have the same requirements. You have to have a certain amount of classroom time per the FAA and you have to have a certain amount of time for the oral exam and the written exam. So keep that in mind. So. I can't speak for Sheffield, I know for a fact it's an excellent school and talking with some of their dispatchers. I thought here in Dallas is great as well, but there are several other schools that are trade schools specifically for dispatching. And also if you're going to college for say aviation management or aviation overall or ATC, you can choose to get the flight dispatch certificate as part of the program in a college format, like in a two or four year setting. So it really all depends. Uh, which way you want to go. So as far as IFOD and Sheffield Fernando, those are both excellent schools, but keep your options open to see what is out there because the FAA uh, mandates the same type of training and the amount of training. And one more question from Mahir says, hey guys, I'm planning to get a course in flight dispatching. I'm a foreigner by the way and don't live in the USA, but I'm trying to join a course in Sheffield School in Florida and I can hopefully get a job. Do you think a foreigner has it easy to learn and get a job, yes or no? So short answer, yeah. You obviously have to have the certain US employment requirements, which I don't know a lot about, but either a US visa or being a US citizen. However, I do know of several foreign born nationals who are now here in the US who I work with. Uh, one's from Korea, one's from Mexico, uh, one's from China, and obviously the key is, you know, having the English language down. But you'll find dispatchers from several different countries. I've met dispatchers from Norway and also from Canada who work here in the U.S. The key is the flight dispatcher certificate is going to help you get a job here in the U.S. I can't speak to Canada or any other country, but having a flight dispatcher certificate from the FAA in the U.S will help you get a job here in U.S. for U.S. companies. So I hope that helps give you a better idea of what it's like being a flight dispatcher. If you want to leave a question for us that we didn't answer or didn't have time for, make sure you do it and uh, write it down in the comment section because Morgan and I will make sure to answer it next month when he actually has some time on his hands. He does apologize and he looks forward to making another video. But in the meantime, upwards and onwards.